how are you uh, walking wounded? How's, how's Eric? How's Hugh? Um, Eric and Hugh both trained this morning, got through training well, um, so unless they don't pull up well tomorrow, they'll, they'll play on the weekend, as will Hodgie. How do you explain that to the other guys? I guess you've got to leave, if they are back, there's three out from Yeah, no, that team. means there's three changes got to be made, and we've got to go and finalise that this afternoon, what that looks like, uh, now that we know that they've been able to get through training. So, no, it's... It's not easy because everybody played their role last week. It was a great team performance, but uh, it's, the reality is those three guys have been high, high, high achievers, high performance for us this year, and they need to come back into the team. So uh, just got to make some hard decisions. I guess that's a really good thing, though, isn't it? Particularly this time of year that you've got those options. It, it is, it, it is, except when you're the bloke like me that's got to go and explain it to the blokes who miss out. But that's all part and parcel of it, you know. We we feel for those fellows who missed out because they played a tremendous role for the team, but uh, it's, the, it's the reality of, of uh, as we become a stronger team in the AFL, that's going to happen more and more regularly. That, that, that's been your strength, though, I think, this year. The fact that you can bring someone in, they do a job, and they know that there's no, it's not about them, it's about the team. Yeah, and, and the good part about it is they know if they come in and play well that we won't hesitate to do it again the next time and that's that's the, the way the guys have looked at it. It's a very selfless way to look at things and um, I've been really pleased with everyone's attitude in, in that regard. How's, how's Lockie? He was a bit like a mummy earlier in the week. He was bandaged both yeah. legs. And yeah, well, he's, uh, he trained today, so uh, it was just all bruises and things and, and part and parcel of a, of a game of AFL footy. Probably had a few more than... Usual, but um, no, he trained today, and you know we don't pl play for another couple of days, so he'll be fine. Was he getting pinched on the arm or anything, or was there something? Oh, I don't know. You'd have to ask him that. Any issue with his eye? It wasn't big. It's just it looks um, yeah. worse than it is. It's just a bit bloodshot. Mm. Why has North been so good recently? Do you think, Bates? I'm sure you've done a, a bit of homework on them. They're probably one of the informed teams of the comp with yourselves. Oh, yeah, they are. If you look at the ladder. Uh, if you do a, set, a ladder over the last seven weeks, North Melbourne are in the top three or four sides. So <laughs> we've got a tough task on our hands. Uh, they're just playing that tough brand of football that North have sort of uh, become famous for. The great at contest the ball, great at uh, st stoppages, uh, and they're not mucking around with the footy. They're, they're kicking it a bit longer and, and giving their forwards a chance. So uh, uh, it's probably all of those things um, is the reason why they're playing well. You, you haven't been like a generally a team that tags guys but other teams have shown that if you can slow down Cunnington they it kind of has a big negative impact on North have you thought about that a lot this week yeah well, I mean we've tagged sometimes and other times we haven't we, we have an open mind about that it's been part of part of our discussion um, and we'll just have to see you know what happens on on Saturday night is it finding a person who, who can do the role too or do you feel you tagged outside players with success, mm -hmm. can't remember you were really sitting on a real inside, but maybe you have. But oh, I think, yeah, sometimes you just sit on guys at stoppages and then you don't elsewhere. Yeah. So, so it's not that easy to pick up from the sidelines. Mitch Robinson's been a good tagger for us yeah. over over a period of time, so we know we've got him up our sleeve if we if we need to do anything, or we can start that way if we want to. How do you navigate the next six weeks? And I guess you know, like people from the outside look at the draw and probably say, well. And a good chance of possibly finishing top four, but internally, how do you how do you sort of look at it? Oh, one game at a time. <laughs> that works for us. Um, there's no point in getting ahead of yourself. You know, we've got a big challenge this weekend, um, and we need to play well in that game. And that's all we think about. And then when that's over, whatever the result, we move on to the next one. And that's just going to be the mantra for the rest of the year. Jared Lyons spoke about that, and he said. Another reason is because they're just loving the journey because mm. they've never been in it. Is, do, you, do you feel that? Yeah, I th I th and I think sometimes too, if, you, if, you, if you're thinking about the big picture too much, you can tend to be a little bit fearful sometimes and worry about that. Whereas if you just concentrate on the here and now and the process, then, you know, I've said it before, I think the process is fearless. So um, I'll stick with that. Can you give us a line on, on Daniel Rich? I mean, there's the story, obviously, and he told standing right there a couple of days ago that when you first met him coming to the club, you said your best footy's in front of you. Mm. That's for a 10 year player, a 200 gamer, that's, that's a, well I know it wasn't about them, but that's a, what did you see him? Oh well, you know, I've watched Daniel Rich from afar. I, I, I love the way he kicked the ball, his, his body strength. Um, uh, I thought he had a pretty good football brain. 
he looked to me as if he was a natural halfback flanker. I don't think he was at the time, but I just liked the way he moved. He, he, he reminded me a little bit of Grant Birchall, I guess, uh, at Hawthorne. So, um, um, and you know, I'd heard lots of things about, about Daniel, but he struck me as a pretty good person. And uh, uh, it doesn't help hurt to, to fill people with confidence that they, they, they have got their best to look forward to. And I honestly believe that with him, and it sort of turned out that way, so that's good. You've also got uh, an investment from him that he hadn't... I mean, he, he played some pretty good football, but he, he was never the guy who was going to die for you. And mm. even in your first year, there was a couple of contests that were publicised, one at Sydney. But this year I've seen him... It was some heroic, in, you know, mm. dropping into the hole and some things we didn't think he had in his game. Yeah, I think that sort of comes with confidence and, and belief. And it didn't happen too much in my first year. I think he ended up in the champion data team of the year. Uh, in 2017, so he had a pretty good year, year one. Last year was a little bit interrupted with an ankle injury early days, but he finished strongly, and this year he's just been terrific. But I think, I think it's come with confidence, with belief, uh, with working within a system with the other backs, and they all understand what they, they need to do. Um, it's all very predictable for them. Um, so I think all that's helped, and he's gradually matured, and, and you know he probably understands that he, that he can compete at the elite level um, really, really well. So. Uh, it's a combination of those things, but it's been a gradual build-up, and and uh, I think you know I, I I don't know what Daniel was like before I turned up, but all I can say is since I've been here, he's been fantastic. And it, he's been through the only fish and I have probably seen more Brisbane Lions losses than Daniel Rich has. He's he's done the hard yards. He has, and um, and so have a few of the other boys like like Zorko and Steph Martin and Darcy Gardner. And, Eric to some degree and, and uh, Harris Andrews to some degree. So it's, um, it's great for them now to, feel, to see what it feels like to, to win a bit more often and to be a chance to play finals. I think that's great for those guys and uh, they deserve that opportunity because they've stuck with the club. We had two signing extensions announced yesterday, Fags. Uh, how pleased were you with the news? Well, I just thought, oh, I've got Mitch Robinson for a couple more years. That's a headache. No, not really. Um, no, I was wrapped for those guys. Um, Mitch Robinson's been sensational for us this year and, and and most of the time that I've been here nobody competes harder than what Mitch does he has his moments but uh, he, he has his great moments and he has a lot of them so uh, really pleased for him and and Jack Payne's a, a young defender with a lot of potential we didn't see much of him last year due to stress fractures uh, he's starting to hit his straps a little bit now so I'm hopeful that you know next year and down the track he can become a key position defender for us so exciting that uh, that he's um, agreed to continue